Hola. Buenos dias. We'll just get set up here. So how many of you flew in uh, for this event? Oh, that's a lot, a lot of people. How many are from Chile? How many are from Latin America? How many are from outside of Latin America? This is a really global audience. This is very exciting. I think we're going to do some big things together. Is this good? Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. So good morning, everyone. My name is Victoria Lennox. I'm the co-founder of Startup Canada. Um, and we're a nonprofit organization, primarily volunteer, fueling a movement across Canada. Now, I don't know about most of you, but Miriam told me what to do. And I have a few key objectives for this session, but really it's to kick off two awesome days so that we can all make those deals that Jan was talking about um, and that we can make, make a big difference, make a big impact in connecting Latin America startups to the world. So I have three key topics that I'm going to be discussing, but then I'll open it up to questions. I'm going to move forward quite quickly because we're starting late, um, but please use this as an opportunity to gain insights into what's going on in Canada and to see what you can take from our experiences um, and share your experiences with us. We're going to talk about trends in entrepreneurship generally. I'm going to talk about the entrepreneur enterprises as well as ecosystems and what's happening in the world. With Startup Canada, we're part of something called the Startup Nations with Startup Chile and Startup Mexico and a lot of the nations in the room. And so I'll really kind of give you a lowdown on what's happening across the world in terms of entrepreneurship. That will put us on an even keel for the rest of the conference. Then I'll talk kind of more about the entrepreneurship landscape, some of the trends, challenges and opportunities that we see and how we can all connect to these opportunities ahead and use them as we move forward past this conference. And then I'll talk about, based on the learnings of Startup Canada and my work in the UK, how we can go about building a startup movement. But I think a lot of it will resonate with you. You'll probably have some questions. And I think from those who are running Startup Nations here in the room, a lot of these, a lot of these insights will resonate. So let's kick it off right. Let's gain some insights on uh, key trends. Um, I'm going to provide you with a bit of a toolkit in which to grow a movement, if that's something that's interesting to you. And then what I really want to see today is that through this live stream, through the work that we do, through the deals, the real deals that are made over the next two days, that we spark something very special in terms of Latin America startup culture and Latin America startup investment. So my challenge to you is to be really active participants over the next two days. And we, it's a, a manageable group. We should all get to know each other and start to do business together because that's how real change happens. So are you ready? Yes. Awesome. So like I said, let's first get to know one another. Um, so how many of the startups in the room are pitching? Can you please just stand up? How many startups in the room are pitching? We cannot wait to hear from you. So this is... Thank you, startups. <laughs> now the investors, investors in the room, can you please stand up? All of the investors. Are you focusing? <laughs> Some still haven't arrived yet. So did you, did you get all of that? That's great. How many community builders are in the room? And you can stand up again if you've already stood up. But how many of you are actually actively advancing entrepreneurship, running startup weekends, startup drinks, startup grind events? Um, from working inside government, working outside government to advance entrepreneurship. Stand up. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. So we saw how many of you came from Chile, Latin America, across, across the world. And there's a big contingent here, obviously, from Canada. So welcome. Um, and thank you so much to the conference organizers for bringing us all together for this very first conference. And I know it will grow year after year. So why are you here? So I'm actually going to pick on a few of you um, to start to get a bit of engagement. So why are you here? Um, I'll start with someone I know. Mike, why are you here? Well, I'm always looking for new opportunities to invest in startups, and I love entrepreneurship with startups. So I like the global reach, so I'm glad here. 
like the global reach wanting to invest in the startups. Irina, why are you here? I'm here like, to meet Chilean entrepreneurs, <coughs> to network. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little bit sick. I'm here to meet Chilean entrepreneurs, to learn more about the ecosystem, to meet uh, actors from different countries. It's always very uh, like useful. It's great. I'm now going to point some people out. So, sir, why are you here? If you want to stand up and project. And introduce yourself and where you're from. Okay, uh, my name is William. I'm from Brazil. And I stay here for uh, make a network and uh, looking for an opportunity to make money to our company and uh, 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 meeting with investors. And uh, we have a, a very excited for stay here. And what's the name of your company? It's uh, Visão Certa. One more time? Visão Certa. Did you get that, Mike? <laughs> okay, and the lady with the glasses? Yeah? Uh, well, I'm actually a part of the business channel. Uh, sorry. And also, I'm participating, well, I'm coordinating a program uh, for uh, startups in, uh, in the audiovisual sector in Valparaíso. So we, we gather 30 entrepreneurs uh, in this area and we try to make them uh, to build uh, networks and also find other uh, possible investors in their, in, their, in their businesses. That's wonderful. So you're building ecosystem, you're building community, you're helping entrepreneurs to grow. Yes. That's wonderful. Um, how about the gentleman uh, with the blue, I think it's blue jacket and blue collar? Yeah. If you can introduce yourself and where you're from. Sure. I'm Jake Colvin. I'm with the Global Innovation Forum in Washington, D.C. And I'm here to understand um, uh, uh, startups' global reach, uh, how they're increasingly global, uh, and how, to, uh, how public policymakers um, should pay attention to startups that are increasingly global. Ah, that's a, that's a good one. Why should, why should governments care about the startup movement? That's great. And one more on this side, um, the gentleman with uh, his Apple laptop. Sure, uh, I'm Evan Henshaw and uh, I'm originally from San Francisco. I live in Uruguay and I, I do uh, a little bit of angel investing and a lot of consulting with startups uh, on how to apply the lean startup methodology. Oh, lean startup methodology, that's great. Just get back online here. Thank you. <coughs> so we've heard from entrepreneurs, investors, experts, policymakers. It's going to be a really great two days um, as we begin to meet each other and start to do business together. And what you'll know, get to know about me really quickly. Um, is that I'm not a keynote speaker, so when Miriam asked, I said, really? I tend to lead from behind. But what I do know about is building movements, and what I do know about is how to bridge cultures, um, Canadian culture, Quebec culture, Aboriginal cultures, UK cultures, Welsh, Scottish cultures, and how to kind of fuel an entrepreneurship movement. And what I love about entrepreneurship is that it, it doesn't matter if you're from Uruguay or if you're from Chile or Canada, um, entrepreneurs, we speak the same language, we have the same spark in our eye, um, and we really know how to hustle together. So when you're meeting with an entrepreneur, it's that you're part of that same culture. So that's why you're here, so let's do something together. So when you're building a movement, you always want to do something together. So I'm going to get you to be a bit silly right now, and I'd like you to all put up your right arm. And then your left arm. Okay, now we're going to go on a roller coaster. We're going to go side to side a few times so the photographer can get it. <laughs> awesome. And can I have you all put your arms down and stand up? Okay, and now we're just going to turn around and shake the person's hand next to you and introduce yourself. Now exchange one business card and then sit down. So your, your ticket to sit down is to exchange one business card. So you can sit down until you exchange one business card.
So you should all have at least one new contact. So entrepreneurs in the room, that's how business gets done. So you saw the investors, so you can target them, and that's how business gets done. Get up, exchange cards, and start communicating. So now, a bit about me, um, and that's, that will probably be useful so you can understand kind of the authenticity to which I build my movements. So I'm from Canada, and I'm from, I'm living right now in this place called Ottawa, and it's a big country. Um, we all come from different places. But my challenge with building this movement in Canada is the sheer geography and the small population. So we, we, we don't have a large population, 33 million in our entire country, um, and we're really, really spread out. We have Aboriginal uh, peoples living on First Nation reserves who really want to employ entrepreneurship for economic development. Challenges faced in terms of actually getting to places, actually moving bodies is a big challenge that maybe entrepreneurs in Europe might not face. We also have very distinct cultures in different parts of Canada, and I know in a lot of our countries it's very, very much the same. So we have the Newfoundland culture, we have the Quebecois, Ontario is rather homogenous, except as you get um, up north. Then you have our prairie region with Alberta with the oil sands and a huge energy sector, and British Columbia is just vibrant with great connections um, with Asia. Then we get up to the territories and we have a huge opportunity when it comes to water. So, in terms of entrepreneurship, in a primarily resource-based economy, how do I, as an entrepreneur, how do I, as someone who's interested in policy and advancing entrepreneurship, influence this massive country that uh, has been pioneering, entrepreneurial, but at the same time has been really reliant on the resource sector, is really spread out, it's difficult to travel, difficult to communicate, difficult to connect. So this is the country that I'm working with. But this is where I'm from, I'm from Ottawa. I did my undergraduate in political science at the University of Ottawa. And I chose the University of Ottawa because I thought I wanted to go into politics. So I studied political science. So how many of you who are entrepreneurs in the room knew you wanted to be an entrepreneur? <laughs> who knew you always wanted to be an entrepreneur? You knew it, you just knew it. So a big kind of mix. Well, I didn't even know about entrepreneurship. What I knew is I wanted to make a change, and that's why a lot of entrepreneurs start. They want to fill a gap, they want to fix a problem, um, they want to leave a legacy. And when I went to my university, I chose it, like I said, because it was close to Parliament Hill, so I worked for my members of Parliament, I worked for ministers, I worked for government departments. I couldn't find a home for what I was trying to do. I couldn't find the kind of the freedom, the tools that I needed. I started working for Amnesty International in the nonprofit sector in the World Economic um, Forum in Canada. Um, and again, I still couldn't find a fit. So, like many, I decided to go travel and I eventually went on to my master's. When I traveled, like many of you as well, I've tried different things. I went to Ghana and worked with micro enterprise sector women who were working in the textile industry. I went to China and I helped um, companies relocate their businesses and their people to Beijing. I still couldn't find a home for myself and where I fit as an individual, as a young entrepreneur. So I went to the University of Oxford and I decided to just continue along my trajectory and I had the great pleasure of being on a Commonwealth scholarship which gave me access to this opportunity. And while I was there, I happened upon something that I really wasn't expecting. I was studying global governance and diplomacy on track to work for an international organization. And what I found when I went into my freshers' fair was what I was not expecting and that was Oxford Entrepreneurs. And Oxford Entrepreneurs is a student club for entrepreneurs. And I decided to go because of one keynote address, and I think a lot of this will resonate with many of the young entrepreneurs in the room. I went into this event wanting to work in an international organization, and I met with this man, Levi Roots. Levi Roots changed my life. And every entrepreneur has their story, this one's mine. So Levi Roots got onto the stage Oxford entrepreneurs, all these kind of stuffy students, and he brought out his guitar, and he brought out his salsa, he has reggae reggae sauce, his grandmother's recipe, and he started kind of singing his song. And I loved Levi because I thought Levi was changing the world with his sauce. His mission was to help people to rediscover their roots, 
through his grandmother's salsa recipe. And he was happy, he was changing the world, he was making people happy, and he was making his own difference and imprint in the world. And as I engaged with Oxford entrepreneurs, I found all these amazing entrepreneurs from BizStone at Twitter to Elon Musk, and we had an opportunity to be exposed to them, and I thought, this entrepreneurship thing means something. But the other side of me is a policy wonk, and so I had to see how I can reconcile that. So when I was almost finished Oxford Entrepreneurs, it turned out that I became quite ill. I had to stay in the UK for some treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma. It was a bit challenging, but it made me think, what am I going to do next? I'm stuck in the UK, what can I do next? Well, I decided to become president of Oxford Entrepreneurs as its first woman president. And while I was president of Oxford Entrepreneurs, we grew to become the most uh, largest entrepreneurship organization for students in Europe with 13,000 members across campus. While we were doing Oxford Entrepreneurs, I recognized some gaps, and I saw kind of the political science thing come into play. And this is where the movement thing starts to happen. I saw that across the UK, 2008 was the year, economic collapse. None of the graduates could find jobs. And I was looking at kind of the Oxford students who were very privileged students, they could not find jobs. Then I was looking at my friends in Manchester and UCL and all the universities across the country, they could not find jobs. They had to create their own entrepreneurship, it became the imperative. And so we decided to start something called the National Association of Colleges and University Entrepreneurs, which is now a huge movement in the UK. We have more than 50,000 students that come through the program each year from colleges and universities, where we help them to become entrepreneurs and start their own companies and kind of create that reinforcing movement. The cool thing is we were able to connect that grassroots movement very quickly to top-down government leadership, and that allowed us to scale. And so for that opportunity, I was then able to kind of go across the world, share what we learned in terms of cultivating a youth entrepreneurship movement, and I became the first Canadian and one of the youngest to win the Queen's Award for Enterprise Promotion for Supporting Entrepreneurship. I'm not doing any of this to toot my own horn. I'm totally the most normal person in the, in, in the world. I mean, you can tell right now, it's very authentic. My point is we all came about entrepreneurship in a different way, and it takes us and leads us to different places. It brought me to San Diego today. But I'm Canadian, and I really wanted to go home to Canada. So after a few years getting NACU set up in the UK, I decided to move back to Canada, and I worked for the po Small Business Policy Group at Industry Canada, which is a government department. And my job was to sit in a cubicle and somehow find a way to make Canada more entrepreneurial from within the confines of my cubicle. And again, I know this can resonate with most of you, and I decided that if something was to happen in Canada, it had to come from outside of government, and if it was to happen fast, it needed to be from the grassroots level. And so that's when I decided with my co-founder, Cyprian, to start up Startup Canada. So why am I here? Well, I'm here because I feel like we, that entrepreneurs are gonna create the future and that we're all really a global family. And for me, it's all about connecting in a really genuine way. I believe that entrepreneurship can change the mindset and the, and the view, as well as the perspectives and the ambitions of individuals, and it can change entire nations. I think it's absolutely transformative, it's a mindset, it's a philosophy, it's a way of being, doing, and creating policies, and I think it's what's going to advance humanity if we do it right. So what the future is ours to create. So, now I'm going to move on to kind of some of the top trends. You'll notice beavers. Everybody know what a beaver is? So in Canada, the beaver is our national, our national animal, and I just love beavers because they're just like entrepreneurs. They're resilient, they create amazing dams, they change the ecosystems within which they operate. So you'll see over here a beaver, you'll see the dam, the beaver working with their team creating the dam, and then you'll see their ecosystem, the environment that they change. They change the way that the waters flow. So let's start with the entrepreneurs, the individual beaver. So what are we seeing in terms of trends? And I know other speakers are going to get more in depth on these trends. What we're seeing is what was traditionally a really high level, kind of immature startup community that focused on code, learning code, learning hacking, they're starting to mature. And they're starting to tackle real world problems, health, education. We're seeing more social entrepreneurs who consider themselves, although they're leveraging technology, they consider themselves to be social entrepreneurs who want to create and change social problems. 
Our next generation, we all know, they're difficult to hire because they have different expectations in terms of the workforce. So when we think about our entrepreneurs, think about the next generation of employees and how they consider themselves to be entrepreneurs. Our entrepreneurs are starting to think bigger because they have access their, to technology. They're digital natives. They're hyper-connected. They're meta-connectors. So they're thinking bigger right away. And because of the media, because of Hollywood, because of the proximity between Silicon Valley and a major film center, we're seeing more and more produced in the media about startups and entrepreneurship, which is actually starting to create an entrepreneurial awakening globally. So there's more media, more tech, more awareness. People are associating with causes. Funding is changing with, with new crowdfunding opportunities. Everyone's more connected. We have role models, and we've all become meta-connectors, and that's why we're here today. But the enterprises that they're creating, these new entrepreneurs, they're creating things that are really lean. They're starting with their MVP. They're proving out their business model. They're getting to their customers quickly. They're thinking local and how they make roots in their communities, but they're also leveraging global, global networks. They love e-commerce. Everything's mobile. Everything's focused on design and user interface, and that's what sets apart our technology startups. They're thinking socially and they're leveraging alternative financing. But in terms of the ecosystem, it takes a lot of different actors, stakeholders, conditions to influence an entrepreneurship ecosystem and to create the conditions for entrepreneurial success. We know in an ecosystem just like the beavers need air and sunshine and water and, and wood and foliage, our entrepreneurs, they need good government policy. They need a, a culture that's going to help to encourage them to be confident. They need success stories, financial capital, education, infrastructure, economic clusters and networks that can accelerate their growth. So what are we starting to see in terms of ecosystems? And I think actually the best practices, while there's a few in Canada, they come from outside of, the, uh, outside of Canada. I think what we're seeing globally is we're seeing the movement from silos of all of these independent factors or interdependent factors. We're seeing a transition from silo to meta networks, clusters forming networks on a global scale. We're seeing entrepreneurs as the leaders of these networks, now policymakers. So government is starting to reimagine their role in the ecosystem and starting to put entrepreneurs at the center of those ecosystems because entrepreneurs know what they need to grow. We're seeing more enabling policies and we're seeing some governments take a leadership role in terms of looking at their policies from an entrepreneur lens, whether it's procurement policies or it's S&T innovation policies or whether it's culture and education, they're starting to consider entrepreneurship. As I mentioned, we're seeing funding transformations, equity crowdfunding legislation being passed in provinces and countries across the world, increased media awareness, cultural campaigns, cluster formations. The ecosystem for entrepreneurship is changing and it's creating the new network that's going to accelerate the next generation of high growth companies that are going to change humanity. So at a high level, a few notes on the global entrepreneurship landscape. And again, this is just to make sure we're on the same page for the next two days. The world is changing, and we're part of this world. Very soon, we'll have 10 billion people on the planet. Climate change and energy are such priorities. There's huge changes in the world's economy. I'm borrowing this slide from one of my mentors, Professor Alan Barrow from Cambridge University. He says that there's a new renaissance in terms of education, access to education, and what that means for industry and the economy and, and the world. Food and water continues to be an issue, but we're innovating around these issues. And this is definitely the century of science and technology. So the world is changing. While primarily, we've always kind of seen a huge focus in economic power driving from the West, the world is very quickly changing. And this changes the way that we as entrepreneurs have to think, and we as policymakers have to think about global connectivity and integrating markets and forming partnerships with clusters. This is a map around kind of the changes in crowdfunding across the world. And for those of us from North America, we'll see that the biggest boost actually has been from the rest of the world in terms of crowdfunding capital that's accessible to entrepreneurs. So this is in addition to the microfinance movement. 
The world has become flat, and this is Thomas Friedman from the 90s. We all know this. But what, what I love is that we are seeing more convergence. So we're seeing converging technologies, co-creation, collaboration, connectivity, correlation, coherence between the ecosystem. And as the ecosystem builds itself and we build the infrastructure, we're going to see things move, move more in line together. We're going to see more homogenous systems that will further accelerate growth. We as entrepreneurs, though, we're thinking differently. The way our brain circulates, how we leverage technology, how we form connections, how we connect with investors, how we connect with accelerators, incubators, global markets, we're changing. Open innovation is in our minds, and it's also the way that we behave as entrepreneurs. This is one of the most important human factors is how we think. What I'm really excited about, though, is biotech, infotech, nanotech, and the intersection of all three and how clusters are starting to connect in these ways globally to create biosensors, biochips. This is what's going to change humanity. We're also seeing at a high level, for those of you working in policy, we're also seeing a really beautiful intersection between R&D education and applications, an increased focus on commercializing the cool technologies and innovations coming out of our colleges and universities, and how we can make those available and democratize this intellectual property. That's all at our fingertips. So entrepreneurial regions will play a huge role. They do play a huge role, but they're still fairly nascent outside of really Silicon Valley. They're still growing. Silicon Valley continues to grow, but a lot of us have less mature ecosystems to work with. So, so much of this is already in place in Silicon Valley, a lot of the infrastructure. But what we need to remember is that Frederick Terman, an individual, played a huge role in founding Silicon Valley. We'll come back to that. We're seeing similar clusters form across the world. I'll just mention a few. Cambridge, Sophia Antipolis in France. Of course, San Diego, Chile, New York, Austin, Texas, Boulder, Colorado, Beijing. These are startup clusters forming through intentionality of both government policy and grassroots